An elephant lives longer than a mouse. A giraffe lives longer than a squirrel. In nature, there exists a universal positive association between body mass and lifespan. The bigger you are, the longer you live. But when it comes to being a dog, the bigger you are, the shorter your lifespan. We've all seen the hobbled giant breed dog who can barely stand up and walk, laboring with each and every step, splaying out on slick surfaces, needing help standing up every time. We're all aware of the adage that giant dogs break down at the age of about six or seven. This is an unfortunate reality of being a larger giant breed dog. But did you know that there are companies out there currently working on therapies designed to literally slow the aging process and extend the lifespan of large dogs. If this sounds like science fiction to you, well, in this video, I'm going to break down some of the latest work being done by a biotech company called Loyal that seeks to quite literally slow the aging process and extend the lifespan of large and giant breed dogs. All right, guys, if you don't mind channeling your inner Barry Bonds and injecting the like and subscribe button with growth hormone, I'd appreciate it. Let's get into the video. Earlier this month, the FDA allowed for the beginnings of conditional approval for a drug called Loy-1 that is designed to slow down the aging process in large breed dogs. Now, you may be asking yourself, why is this drug targeted for large and giant breed dogs? Well, that's because on average, larger and more purebred dogs tend to have a shorter lifespan compared to their medium and smaller, more mixed breed counterparts. This is somewhat counterintuitive because as I mentioned at the top, in nature, wild animals' lifespans follow what's called the rate of living theory. This theory postulates that the faster that an organism's metabolism is, the shorter its lifespan. In other words, animals that are larger tend to live longer than smaller animals. To make an extreme example, an elephant on average is going to live for much longer than a mouse. But dogs appear to be the opposite. So why is that? One study published in 2016 looked at a metric that the researchers called birth adult mass ratio. In other words, the ratio between the size of a dog at birth relative to its size as an adult. If you've ever seen or held newborn puppies of different breeds, you may notice how there isn't too much of a difference in the size of a newborn puppy of a small versus a large breed dog. There is some difference, yes, but when you compare the end result of an adult dog, clearly the difference in their size gets greater and greater as the dogs reach mature. Another way to think about this is that giant breed dogs start off relatively smaller compared to smaller breed dogs. And in order to reach their enormous size, there has to be a much larger amount of energy spent by and within their bodies in order to reach this adult size. Just think about how much energy it would take, say, for a St. Bernard puppy to reach a final body weight of 200 pounds compared to, say, a Maltese puppy that reaches a final adult weight of 10 pounds. That is a massive difference in growth, and this energy expenditure comes at a cost in the form of more rapid rapid aging, i.e. shorter lifespan. Now, I'm obviously oversimplifying the absolutely enormously complicated biochemical process of aging here. There's a ton of research over the years looking at dog aging, and the take home message seems to be this. If you are a dog, the larger you are, the shorter your lifespan. It seems our breeding of dogs has created a problem, hasn't it? We've all seen the, let's call it seven year old, 180 pound Newfoundland who can barely get up and walk because of a combination of osteoarthritis, degenerative nerve issues or other maladies, or the 10-year-old Labrador with polyneuropathy and laryngeal paralysis, what's called gulp. Contrast these observations to dogs like this 13-year-old mongrel terrier who was found in the gutter in Albuquerque, who has great mobility and energy at the age of 13, and you get the idea. Yes, this is just one example, and yes, this is my dog. Yes, there are exceptions. Everyone's cousin's best friend's prom date's aunt has a chocolate lab that lived to 31, right? 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 31? Large and giant breed dogs make great companions, obviously, but it's pretty sad watching these dogs break down, as they say, after only a few years. Well, it turns out there's a company in California called Loyal, led by CEO Selena Holloway, hope I'm pronouncing that right, that wants to address this problem. Loyal has begun to develop a longevity drug aimed at extending the lifespan of large and giant breed dogs. The drug is currently called Loy-1, and according to a press release in November 2023, Loy-1 represents a new category of pharmaceutical focused on targeting mechanisms of aging, to prevent or delay the onset of age-associated diseases rather than waiting for patients to get sick before treating them. Loy-1 recently passed the what's called reasonable expectation of effectiveness section of Loyal's conditional FDA approval application. FDA conditional approval is kind of a fast track for veterinary drugs to try and increase availability of innovative therapies like this. According to Business Wire, the Center for Veterinary Medicine at the FDA has reviewed Loyal's data, results, and scientific arguments and determined they provide reasonable expectation of the drug's effectiveness to extend canine lifespan and health span. Pending successful completion of the manufacturing and safety sections, Loyal will receive conditional approval for Loy 1, allowing them to market the drug for large dog lifespan extension. So this is all very promising news. It seems like the FDA has reviewed 
the data that Loyal has generated from the use of this drug in their own clinical trials, and they seem to be very open to getting this drug on the fast track toward its use in the general dog population. My first question, though, may be your first question, which is, how does this drug, Loy-1, actually work? Well, according to Loyal, Loy-1 is meant to be administered as an injection by a vet every three to six months, and Loyal is apparently working on oral versions of the drug called Loy-2 and Loy-3, but all versions of this drug work by, in some way, according to Loyal, inhibiting the effects of a hormone called insulin-like growth factor 1, or IGF-1 for short. IGF-1 is a hormone made by the liver in response to growth hormone secreted by the pituitary gland. IGF-1 has a very strong growth-promoting effect on the majority of cells in the body, especially cells like muscle, bone, cartilage, and various major organs. People with acromegaly, like the famous wrestler Andre the Giant, reach their enormous size in part due to the effects of excessive IGF-1 as well as growth hormone. Andre the Giant is my favorite athlete of all time and it's not even close. Research has shown giant breed dogs get to be giant for very similar reasons, namely excessive amounts of IGF-1. Studies in mice and other animals have demonstrated that the net effect of excessive IGF-1 present in the body after maturity is essentially a shortened lifespan. Other studies in mice have shown that mice demonstrate an extended lifespan when you inhibit IGF-1. In human studies, levels of circulating IGF-1 tend to be lower in older people, and higher levels are associated with all-cause mortality and dementia. Now, here's where the known information kind of stops. As far as how LOI-1 specifically works, like its pharmacologic profile and precise mechanism of action, I wasn't able to find this information. The Loyal website has an FAQ document about LOI-1 as well as LOI-2 and LOI-3, both in development, and they only mention how the drug lowers levels of IGF-1. They don't say how it lowers IGF-1 or inhibits it in some way. So my questions are, for instance, does LOI-1 prevent IGF-1 from being made by the liver, or does it somehow neutralize it in the bloodstream? Or does maybe LOI-1 block the receptors for IGF-1 in cells? Who's to say? My guess is since the drug is still going through FDA approval process and clinical trials and maybe has some patents pending, it's probably being kept tightly under wraps for now until it's wide accepted use. But I do have some guesses as to what this drug may be or how it works, so let's take a minute and speculate. For my guesses, I think we can look to human medicine for some clues as to what LOI-1 actually is. This is why I brought up acromegaly earlier. If we look at this problem in dogs and treat it like giantism or acromegaly in people, I think it makes sense to look and think about the drugs in human medicine used to treat these conditions. In humans, somatostatin drugs like atreotide reduce growth hormone production and in turn, IGF-1 production. Other drugs like cabergoline and bromocryptine lower levels of growth hormone and IGF-1 as well. And another drug called pegvizumab can also help lower IGF-1 levels. Now, I have no idea if LOI-1 is like a dog version of these drugs, but it wouldn't surprise me if they were. Another possibility I thought of for LOI-1 is that the drug may actually be like a binding protein. See, IGF-1 circulates in the bloodstream with the vast majority of it being bound to proteins that are called IGF-1 binding proteins. And there's only a very small amount of free-floating and functional IGF-1 in the blood. So it's possible that LOI-1 may also be a binding protein of some kind that reduces this tiny amount even further. But who's to say? This is all speculation on my part. Now, I did reach out to some of the veterinarians on the Loyal team by email and direct message, and I'm trying to connect with them. And I might be scheduling an interview with the lead veterinarian in the next couple of weeks, talked about all things related to this drug. So stay tuned for that. Understand Understandably, this drug is getting a ton of hype. Pretty much every vet on social media has made posts and discussed this possible anti-aging therapy because, well, it's exciting. But it would be a bit irresponsible of me to not bring up some questions and concerns I have in regards to this potentially novel therapy. My first question is, how will LOI-1 interact with other medications? Plenty of the dogs this medication is meant for are probably already receiving drugs like anti-inflammatory medications, joint supplements, thyroid supplements, pain meds, holistic meds, all sorts of different stuff. We don't know, we probably won't know, how exactly LOI-1 interacts with any of these medications. Number two is a big one. What are the side effects of this drug? Both short and long-term side effects of this drug are currently unknown as far as I know. Now, the CEO, Selena Huloway, has been on podcasts recently talking about LOI-1 a lot, and she did indicate that it seems like there's very little side effects, so taking her word for it, that seems to be a pretty good start. Third question I have is how would LOI-1 affect dogs with other diseases, other comorbidities? Fourth question would be what will it cost a pet owner? What is this injection every three to six months going to cost? That is a big question that needs to be answered. Number five, what exact dog breed age and size will the drug be indicated for? This question has already been answered by Loyal. Apparently the drug LOI-1 is designed for dogs over the age of seven and over 40 pounds. It brings up some questions in and of itself, which is like, what if the dogs are obese? What if a dog weighs 39 pounds? and the owner is seeing it break down, as they say, coming into the vet, 
and they're putting a lot of pressure on a veterinarian to give them this drug. Is the veterinarian going to feel pressure to fudge this dog's weight in order to just get this drug? I think that's a big issue. In summary, I think this drug has a lot of promise. I think Loyal seems to be a company with their hearts and minds in the right place. They have a lot of vets on their research team and they're practicing real science and biotech innovation from what I can tell. I applaud them for that and I truly hope this medication delivers better lives for these dogs. But I do have to say one final thing and that is from a philosophical standpoint, I think we should zoom out a little bit here and look at the big bigger picture. We humans have artificially selected certain dogs to become this big through years and years of selective breeding for size and for shape. And in doing so, we forced a shortened lifespan onto them. The root of this problem is that breeding. And now, rather than as a society reflecting on this practice and saying, hey, maybe we shouldn't breed for extreme features such as body size, we instead develop drugs to reverse some of the deleterious effects of centuries of artificial selection. I think on the macro level, we're getting this a little bit backwards. But like I said, I do support loyal in this endeavor and I wish them the best of results. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll continue to follow up about the recent developments in this drug. And like I said, I'm hopefully going to be scheduling an interview with the lead veterinarian on the research team uh, here in the next couple of weeks. Um, any new news that comes out, I'll make videos about it. And obviously if this becomes part of clinical practice, I'll let you know how I'm seeing results too if I start to use it in my line of work. Guys, please, if you don't mind, hit that like and subscribe button. I hope you enjoy this video very much and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.